So the first client that we're going to be using for our testing is the iPhone. So we have our Apple iPhone here. Before we associate the iPhone to the LMBYOD SSID, let's bring up the authentication activity page as well as the, let's get my device portal ready. Okay, let's lock in with the admin one. Okay, there we have that. So now if you go to settings, and here we have LMBYOD. So if we click on that. Okay, now we are connected to LMBYOD. Let's look at the authentication activity. So you can see just by looking at the identity column, if it shows up as the MAC address, we know that it's trying to do MAC address bypass authentication or MAP. And just the fact that this came from the wise line controller, we know it has successfully gone through the MAP authentication. And now it's got the authorization profile of the BLAN CWA. And you can even see that has been profiled as an Apple iPhone. Okay, now that we are connected, let's bring up the browser. And let's go to uh, cisco.com. And we are now being redirected to the guest portal login page. So you can see here, unlike the single SSID method, instead of using PEEP, we're just gonna be locking in through the guest portal here. So with username admin1, and password, then we lock in, and then we are presented with a, to accept the root certificate that right now the iPhone is not trusting. So go install, install, and now it becomes trusted. So we're done, and we're back on the device registration page. And here, since we use or we registered the iPhone in the previous video, it kind of remembers the description that we put in, which is the iPhone. So let's keep at the same. And we click register. And now ICE is trying to push the profiles to it. So we'll click and say we want to install the profile. And just a little warning that said installing profile might change the setting on the iPhone. Now let's go ahead and generating key and the installing certificate. Again, it's going through that twice. Seems like that's how the iPhones operate. And now the profile is installed. If you look at the more detail, again, here we see a root CA certificate. It's, it's been installed as well as the, the device own certificate with the name admin1. Okay. And the last item down below is the actual network settings with the SSID LM dash internal. So the profile is installed, click done. If you see right here, there's a little warning that said, please make sure to connect to LM dash internal network after successfully installing the profile. So this indicates that it's a manual process. So the iPhone doesn't really switch SSID and automatically connect to the SSID that was part of the network setting that is just received. So what you need to do is go back to the wireless settings. You can see we still stay connected to LM BYOD. So now we have to manually switch to LM internal. And you can see we have successfully connected to LM internal SSID. And on, on the monitoring page, we now see it becomes a registered device with the permit all permission. Okay, so if we go back to our web browser and trying to access cisco.com one more time. You can see we now have internet access on our iPhone. Again, just to test the Come back to my device portal page real quick and then test loss. You can see OA went out. And if you're trying to go uh, somewhere else, go back to Cisco. 
we are now being redirected to an unauthorized network access page that was hosted on ICE. Okay, and if you refresh, now the device become a blacklist and receive the blacklist authorization profile. Okay, so let's, let's go back and reinstate the device. It's refreshed. COA went out one more time to the controller and the device is back on permit all. And we can now get back onto Cisco.com. Okay, so just take a quick note here. Let's go under the authentication detail for the wireless map. Let's see what might be, um, how it might look a little different from what we had with the single SSID with PEEP authentication here. You can see that the authentication protocol has become lookup. An authentication method is map. And now you can see received the BYOD CWA. The other way to tell that this is actually a map type authentication is the service type is call check and port type is wireless indicating it's a wireless connection. Okay, identity group is a profile of Apple iPhone. Here where it shows that the VLAN ID is three. So we have that as part of our condition. Okay, everything else looks pretty much the same as the, as far as what's usually happen with the map. Okay, so now let's move on to our next device, which is Android. So let me bring up the Android right here. So we still have the profile installed from our previous video. So first thing is to go into Wi-Fi wi settings and delete it. So right here, Alim internal. If you click on it, let's go ahead and forget. Okay, so that should have been forgotten. Okay, so just to repeat what I've mentioned in the previous video with the single assist ID, Android works a little differently as far as it's require a separate applications that you need to uh, have install on your Android device in order to uh, connect to ICE, and that's called Cisco Network Assist uh, Setup Assistant. And the way to get the users to download that, you can see in the minute here, either you let the Android as part of the setup process, uh, automatically redirect the user to the Google Play page and then download it on the fly. But at the same time, you need to make sure that at the time you are allowing the user device to access Google. And unless you know the exact IPs or even allow it to all the Google subnets, which might be undesirable, um, then the other way is to have user pre-download the app before they actually start the onboarding process. So it's again, incorporate that as part of the instruction that you hand out to the user and make sure they have that app installed before getting onto the network. And that's how we're gonna proceed in this lab. So here with LM BYOD, let's connect to that. We'll go connect and see it's obtaining IP address. Go back to our monitor page. We have successfully authenticate through wireless map. Here, if we bring up the web browser, go to cisco.com. We expect it to be redirected to a login page, just like we saw on the iPhone. Okay, so log in with admin one, with the password, log in. Again, we are now at the device registration page. Again, we use this Android in the previous video and it remembers the description of Android. Let's keep using that. So we click registered. And now this is where we get redirected to the Google Play to download the, the apps. But for us, we already have that app downloaded. So we go is to launch the app. Here, right here with the fingerprint, and then we click start. You can see it go through pretty quickly with the downloading profile installing certificate. So here we install certificate. 
username or default certificate name admin one click OK again one more certificate to install which is I certificate click OK and now it's trying to connect to LM internal SSID as it receives as part of the profile see why this got disconnected already now it's about to try to get back on and now we have successfully connected to LM internal okay if you do a little refresh in the background you can see we now have the permit all and if we go back to our browser and just refresh the page our Google Play page that it was trying to access earlier you can see you can now access the page okay so if you were to allow on, on your wireless ACL for the user to access a Google Play this is where you will click and the user can dynamically install the app if you wish to do that, but just uh, be mindful as far as the make sure you're not allowing users additional access or more access than they actually need to download the app. Because uh, within the Google IP subnet, they host other website, not just the Google search page, but things like yeah, yeah, uh, YouTube website as well. Okay, so the last type of client we are going to test here is the Windows machine. Okay, so let's let's lock into our test machine. Okay, wireless is currently not connected. Let's make sure we did not have the previously installed certificate or even the trusted certificate. Okay, so we're good. Then let's try to connect to LMBYOD. Okay, all right, so that we are connected. And again, let it popped up because it's getting blocked by the login page. You know, here, let's go proceed anyway. And we're at the guest portal. Let's first use the account that we know that should not work, which is the employee one. Then lock in. Although you can see employee one can actually successfully authenticate through our guest portal here and actually being presented to register their device. Uh, the reason this is the case because if you look back to our uh, client provisioning page, the way we condition based on who can download these clients or this uh, profiles, we did not actually enforce the user group membership here. So if we did, uh, the user would not even able to register their device, which is something that you might want to consider. Even though if employee one goes through with the registration process and get all the network settings and everything, but when it comes to authenticating using ETLS, it will fail because under conditions right here, we are conditioned based on the user group membership as well. Okay, so you can see wireless LAN user, wireless user. All right, so instead, let's not go through with that, but actually use the admin one account. Okay, with uh, admin one, lock in. And here with the description we already have with the MAC address, let's go ahead and register. Okay, now network setup assistance, go through with the process, start. Accept all the certificate prompts. Asking you to install the root certificate, so say yes. Okay, now this time we are successfully connected to the wireless network. It has obtained all the network setting that, is, that it needs as well as the certificate. If you go under the certificate stores, refresh, and now you can see there's an admin one certificate as well as the uh, the root CA certificate. Okay, so if we go exit, if we go back to the wireless connection, and now it says we are connected to LM-internal. And now if you go to cisco.com, enter. And we do have access to that. Again, to verify, go to my device portal page. And we have that device successfully registered. 
you can see if you recall or if you watched the previous video with the single SSID, you can see that at the end the network setup assistant fail. But when we use the dual SSID scenario, somehow it uh, succeeds no problems. So the only different as far as the setup was just to show you real quick under the authorization profile. If you're wondering how the configuration is different between the dual SSID and the single SSID. So for the dual SSID, we have the WLAN CWA with the web authentication set up to centralize. And that's why we saw the guest portal page. But when we did the single SSID, Okay, we had it uh, point to a supplicant provisioning. So that's the main difference, but somehow with the supplicant provisioning, the provisioning process was failing. Okay, so now that we have successfully connected to the wireless network, let's do a quick test with the black hole or blacklist. So click yes. COA went out. Let's click on something and the client is being blocked by ICE. Okay, do a quick reinstate. Yes, make sure the COA went out also. This time it did. We've gone back to permit all. Back in Cisco, and we can pretty much go anywhere you like on the internet, okay? So you can see the process with two SSID it's a little cleaner as far as instead of using PIP, you use the guest portal page. So you don't have to worry about user having to manually configure the wireless settings to be compatible with your PIP settings. And the other benefit that as far as I can see is when you separate the onboarding SSID with your actual production SSID, now you can pretty much hide your production SSID if you do not want to broadcast that to public. And because the user wants to register and download network settings, they will know what that SSID be without user ha actually having to have any kind of knowledge of the name of that SSID. So it's actually additional security as well if you'd like to not to broadcast your production SSID. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up our mini video series on Cisco Eyes BIOD. I hope you guys enjoyed and also learned something from that. Thank you for watching labmiss.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.